Welcome to part three of the Big Easy Crochet Pullover Crochet Along sponsored by Yarnspirations. My name is Brittany and I'll be your guide throughout this project. Learning to crochet garments was a big leap for me, but also one of the most gratifying experiences. If you've never made a sweater before, this is the perfect place to start. The free pattern can be downloaded from yarnspirations.com and you can find the link to that right here in the top right corner of your screen. We're breaking this project down into three easy parts and we're wrapping up with part three today. Don't worry if you're finding this tutorial well after the crochet along has concluded. The videos will remain online. All right, let's dive into part number three of our sweater. All right, so at this point we have the front and back section of our sweaters completely finished and we have both of our arms started to this point here. So I wanna direct your attention to page three of the pattern. We're going to dive right into the shaping of the arm. We're gonna work an eight row repeat. We're gonna do that four more times on top of the demonstration. So we'll work that repeat a total of five times and then we're gonna work a straight section in pattern to get the length that we need. So here I am working on the right side of the work. That's where I'm gonna pick up with row one of the arm repeat. We're gonna chain two. And then we wanna locate our first stitch, which again is that slip stitch. And we're gonna work two half double crochet stitches there. Next, we're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch until we get to the last stitch. And we're gonna increase on that last stitch again by making two half double crochets in the last stitch. So I'm now at the end of my row, I'm working two half double crochets into my last stitch, which is a slip stitch. Row two of our side shaping of the arm, we're gonna start with two chains. So chain two and turn your work. And we're going to work in our body pattern, but we're just starting it off a little bit differently. We're going to work a double crochet in the first stitch, so right there with that chain two. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. So that's our repeat double crochet and slip stitch. We're gonna repeat that across the row and when we get to the last stitch, we're going to half double crochet in that last stitch. So at the end of row two, we're gonna work our slip stitch in the second to last stitch and we'll half double crochet in the last stitch. Now moving right along to row number three, we're going to chain two and turn our work and this time we're going to make one half double crochet into every stitch, starting with the first one here, which is that half double crochet. So we want to work a half double crochet, our first stitch there, and then one half double crochet into every stitch. Row number four is a repeat of row number two. So we're going to chain two and turn our work. This is where we're going to start off with a double crochet in that first stitch right there with the chain and then slip stitch into the next and repeat your double crochet and slip stitch across the row and when you get to the last stitch you'll make it the half double crochet in the last stitch. At the end of row number four, your second to last stitch will be a slip stitch again, 
and you're going to make a half double crochet into the last stitch. Moving on to row number five, row five is a repeat of row number one. So we're going to chain two and turn our work. And this time we're going to work two half double crochets in the first stitch and two half double crochets in the last stitch. So we're increasing on this row. We're gonna find our first stitch and make two half double crochets there. Now work one half double crochet into every stitch until you get to the end and work two half double crochets in the last. So I've just finished up row number five. I've worked two half double crochets in that last stitch. Moving on now to row number six, I'm going to chain one and turn my work. And I'm gonna locate that first stitch and we'll slip stitch there. Then double crochet in the next and slip stitch. And you're just going to repeat this to the end of the row. At the end of row six, you should end with a slip stitch in your last stitch. And we're moving on now to row number seven, which is a repeat of row three. We're going to chain two and turn our work. And this time just make one half double crochet into every stitch. Moving on to row number eight, the final row for the repeated section here, we're going to just repeat row six. So this time we're gonna chain one and turn our work. We'll find the first stitch and slip stitch there. And double crochet in the next stitch. And repeat these two stitches until you get to the end of the row. Once you've made it to the end of row eight, you should have increased by four stitches. So you'll refer back to your pattern and figure out how many single crochet you evenly spaced along your ribbing. That was our starting point. We should have four more stitches. So every time we work this eight row repeat, we're gonna increase by four stitches. The next thing we need to do is repeat this a total of four more times. So we're gonna repeat rows one through eight four more times and that's going to work us up through the increase. Now one thing I wanna draw your attention to is the wobbly edges. It's totally fine, it's gonna happen. Something you probably noticed with this stitch pattern is it has a pretty strong bias to it. So on your front and your back panel, you probably noticed a really significant lean. And that's okay, that's just part of the stitch pattern and we're gonna correct a lot of this with blocking. So for the arm, you're just gonna make sure your stitch count is correct throughout the whole process. And we'll worry about the shaping after we've finished crocheting both of the arms. So work through that repeat rows one through eight, four more times, we'll meet back up at the end of that and talk about the last final thing we need to do for our sleeves. Once you've worked that eight row repeat, a total of five times our sleeve now looks something like this. And we're ready to continue on with just working in the body pattern. So we're going to work our body pattern. So that's the first row being where we start with a slip stitch and do the double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet. So we're making that bumpy row. That's That will be the wrong side row. And then we follow that up with one half double crochet in every stitch. So just like we worked for the front and the back pieces, we're gonna work that same pattern repeat now until our sleeve measures a certain length from our starting edge here, which is right on the edge of our ribbing. So this is going to be the starting point of our measurement. We're gonna work it up until the measurement matches the pattern. For me, in the size that I'm making, I'm aiming for 17 inches from this bottom edge up to where I stop. And if you're working on a different size, of course, you'll just refer to your pattern to get that exact measurement. 
once you have reached that measurement, you wanna make sure that you have stopped on a wrong side row. So that's going to look just like we have here, where we have this bumpy edge exposed and we're ready to pick up working on the right side. So go ahead and work up that repeat until your sleeve measures the proper length as indicated in the pattern. There's just a couple more things we have to do to finish up the sleeves. Once you have finished that last repeat and your sleeve measures the proper length as indicated in the pattern and based on the size you're working on, we just have a few more rows, but before we can do that, we need to take a stitch marker and we need to mark this last stitch or this last row that we worked. So we ended on a wrong side row. I'm just going to take my stitch marker and just mark this row. We're gonna use that later for reference. So place that marker and we're going to repeat the body pattern for a total of three more rows. So we're going to pick up on a half double crochet row. So we'll go ahead and chain two and then work one half double crochet into every stitch. And then we're gonna follow that up with a wrong side row. So that's where we work the double crochet and slip stitch. So starting off that row with the slip stitch and working that body pattern. And then we're going to end with one final row of half double crochet. So where we work one half double crochet into every stitch. So go ahead and finish up those last three rows and then we're ready to fasten off. Once you finish up those last three rows, we've ended on a row with half double crochet on the right side of the work. We're gonna go ahead and fasten off. So just leave yourself a tail that's long enough to weave in later and pull that tail through the loop on your hook. And of course we're gonna need to finish our second arm. In the meantime, I would also like to talk to you about blocking. So I'm just gonna pull this in the screen so you can really see the significant lean. And you've noticed this in your projects, it's nothing you're doing wrong. It's just a characteristic of this stitch pattern. It's always going to lean towards your dominant hand. Well, that's okay, it can be corrected through wet blocking. And so while you're working on crocheting up your other arm, you'll need to go ahead and block the front and the back sections of your sweater. So I would ask you to refer to page three of the pattern. You'll see a little drawing on the back of that and it's gonna give you measurements based on the sizes. So you'll see it's color coded. So if you're looking on a printout, a black and white printout, you probably want to just pull up the pattern on the website or on your phone, and that way you can figure out which measurement you need to refer to. Well, those are the finished measurements. So you'll go ahead and block your project so that it measures the same as the measurements in the pattern. Block your front and your back, finish crocheting your second sleeve. We're gonna block these two, and then the last thing we'll need to do is work the neckline and seam everything together. Once you have all of your elements crocheted, we have our front piece, our back piece, we have both of our arms completely crocheted. I mentioned before blocking is really one of the best things you can do to make your sweater look nicer. And this is really gonna be solid proof right here. Now you can see how nice and clean and how straight these edges are. This was absolutely not the case before blocking. This stitch pattern really has a tendency to bias or to lean towards your dominant hand and blocking is the one thing as you can see that can totally correct that. So you have your front and your back pieces blocked and the next thing we're going to do is join the shoulder seams. Now the instructions do recommend that you sew them, but just from personal experience, I find that any opportunity you can crochet your pieces together it's gonna hold up a little bit better. So let's see how to do that next. So you want to line up your two pieces as best as you can. We're going to make the right sides towards each other. So we're going to be looking at the wrong side. We've got the both right sides on the inside. And then we just wanna grab a piece of yarn. We're gonna be working with this and insert your hook into the stitch on one piece and then into the stitch on the back piece. 
and then place that loop on your hook and then chain one. To do our joining, we're just gonna slip stitch across. So go ahead and insert your hook into the next stitch on each of the pieces, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. So we're just going to slip stitch into every stitch on each piece to join this side of the, the shoulder seam. And when you get finished with this one, you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Let's go ahead and do that now. So the last thing we're going to crochet is the neck band. And this is the same ribbing pattern that we used for the bottom of the front and the back and for each of the sleeves. The difference here is the number of chains we're starting with. So we're going to chain six. And then we're gonna locate the second chain from the hook. Again, I like working in the back, so I'm just flipping it over. And you'll make one single crochet into every chain. We have five stitches there. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the next row. So we'll chain one, turn our work, locate our first stitch right here next to the chain and work a single crochet through the back loop only. We're gonna work a single crochet through the back loop only of every stitch. We're gonna have a total of five single crochets at the end of the row. And then we're going to repeat this row until our neck band is long enough to fit all the way around our neckline. And the best way that I found to, to make that work is just to crochet for a little bit and hold it up to your sweater and just sort of eyeball it. You can do some measurements too, that will also work. You can measure the size of the neckline and you can just go by that measurement. You want to make sure that your neckline, the ribbing here, is just slightly shorter than that measurement. So you wanna, you wanna stretch it a little bit to make it fit around. And once you get this crochet, then I'll demonstrate how we're going to attach it. Once you have your neck band crocheted, we're going to join it to our sweaters. So I have already attached or sewn together, actually crocheted together, my two shoulder seams. So you wanna make sure you have that done first. And then we're going to align one of the edges with one of the shoulder seams. Doesn't matter which one. That way we can sort of hide this seam within this other one that we already have there. So we'll need to make a cut of yarn and it needs to go the full length around the neckband. So just a general rule of thumb, if you, when you're sewing something together, if you cut a piece of yarn that's about two times the length that you need, you should have more than enough to work all the way around. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the neckband to the shoulder seam. And I'm just going right in one piece and through the other. And I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a tail so I can weave that in later. And I really like the whip stitch, so that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to work back into the same place that I just started. And that's just to get a nice secure join there. Now what I have found works really well for me is working into, you can sort of see these little bumps from our turning chains, just from working those rows. Well, I like working my darning needle in that little bump. And then I'm just gonna come through the, so this is the back of my sweater, I'm just gonna come through there. 
And again, I'm doing all this on the wrong side of the sweater. So I have the wrong side facing up, the, the right sides are together. And that's because this is going to give us a little bit of a seam and we want it to be on the wrong side rather than the right side. So once you have your join, you can go ahead and work, well just hold them together. So I'm holding the back side and I'm holding the band here and I'm just going to work my whip stitch all the way across. Now one thing you want to be mindful of is that you're pretty consistent with the placement of your needle. If you work the needle into, let's say you go really far and you kind of catch this spot out here and then maybe on another one you come closer to the edge, well that's going to give us sort of a wobbly join and we don't want that or a wobbly seam. So try to be consistent with your needle placement on both sides of the work and you can eyeball it as you go. So I've made a few stitches here. I'm just gonna look at the right side of the work. Just make sure it's it looks good to you. The other thing you want to be mindful of is how close you're making your stitches. So if we take too much of a space in between, we will have a little bit of a hole on the other side. So I really just try to eyeball those little bumps and then just catch the next row on the other side. And again, you can always make any corrections just by looking at the right side of the work as you go along. If you notice a hole, then just go back and place another stitch there. Once you've sewn all the way around your neck seam, the last thing we'll need to do is just sew the two ends together. And I'm gonna work this in a whip stitch too. I'm gonna catch both loops of the stitch on both sides. And just work that across each stitch. At this point we have three seams remaining. We're actually gonna work them all the same. Now you can make the choice of crocheting these together or you can use a darning needle and stitch them just like we did for the neckline. It's really a matter of personal opinion. I do find that crocheting them works really well, but if, you, if it's done correctly, the darning needle works just fine. So I'm gonna demonstrate with that because it's a little bit more difficult. If you do decide to work with the crochet hook, you're going to work in the stitches of the arm and then through the side edges of each of the pieces. So you're gonna lay your sweater out like this. Here is my neckline and one of my shoulder seams. The wrong side is facing up and I have my little cutout here. So this is the armhole and it goes all the way across here. Now this is my sleeve and you want to make sure again this, the wrong side is facing up and just sort of place it in that little notch for our armholes. Now you may need to stretch this a little bit to fit right up into each of the edges and that's perfectly fine. And we're going to start with one edge and I find it easiest to just grab two, grab the two pieces and just sort of fold them up so I can whip stitch through it. And I'm gonna line the corner of the sleeve with the corner of that little cutout for the armhole and work this through. Leave yourself a little tail to weave in. And again, I'm just gonna place another stitch in the same place just to secure it up. And from here, I'm just gonna whip stitch over this entire thing. Now it's good to sort of eyeball it and know how much you need to stretch it. I was about a half inch short or so on the other side. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm stretching the sleeve just a little bit as I go. Just stretch it till it fits and then pinch it off with your fingers. That'll give you an idea. And work your whip stitches. 
I'm finding it easiest to go into the side. So this is one of the front or the back sections and then go under the stitch. You wanna make sure you're placing your stitches close enough together that you don't have any gaps or holes. And again, like we did with the neckline, just check it as you go. Go ahead and you know stop every now and then, flip it over, make sure the seam looks nice and clean, and also that there aren't any holes. Once you have your first sleeve attached, you wanna make sure you can you go ahead and sew your other sleeve on while you still have one big piece that opens up. It makes it so much easier when you can lay these pieces out flat like we did. So sew on your other sleeve before you move on to the final seam. After you've done that, we want to situate our sweater. So again, we have the wrong side facing out, right sides are towards me. And I'm just laying this out just inside out as, as it looks. So situate everything so that you have your sleeve, your flat seam, just nice and lined up and your side seam nice and lined up. The last two seams you're gonna have to make and you'll make them the same way that we worked this one here is sewing up the side and then going into the sleeve. You're gonna take a cut of yarn for each one of those sides and sew it up just like we did here. Once you get that, of course, you'll have several ends that you need to weave in. You can go ahead and do that while you have your sweater on the wrong side. And then your sweater's complete. Now, I hope you share your photos with me on social media. I can't wait to see all of the sweaters that you guys have made and the color choices that you have decided on. So go ahead and share your photos with me on Instagram and Facebook using hashtag BeHooked. Thank you guys, I'll see you next time.